Okay, so in this video, I want to look at um, something called instantaneous rate of change. So um, by now, you should have uh, already known that the average rate of change of a function is just the slope of the secant line that you draw through whatever two points you need. Um, so if I wanted an instant rate of change, let me actually pull this up. If I'm looking for an average rate of change, like on this, let's say, from here to here, then all I do is I draw that line and I figure out its slope. But if I need an instantaneous rate of change instead at this specific point, then what I actually need is the slope at that point. And the way you do that is you essentially take this point. You need a slope, so you need two points. You take this point and you make up a new point and then you force this point to come in towards that point. So I made a little um, sketch pad thing here. So uh, here's my function is the purple line. I'll uh, make that a little darker. And uh, my goal is to figure out what the instant rate of change is right here, which means the slope of the tangent line there. So um, if I just have a f of a, b f of b, then this right here is the difference in the y values. This right here is the distance, the difference in the x values, b minus a. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually drag point b over to point a and watch what happens to this to the secant line, right? So as I'm dragging it over, the secant line turns into a tangent line right there. And uh, over here, you can actually see this is the function, but that doesn't really matter for this example. You can see that this gets smaller, this gets smaller, um, and they turn into zero over zero. But the slope never turns into some weird thing like that. The slope just keeps getting calculated. And what's actually happening is I'm taking a limit as point B turns into point A here. right? And so when I'm right there, there's the slope. It's roughly 0.35 okay, for this example. So um, I also want to show you a different way of thinking about this. Let me see if I can find it here. Oop. Okay, so another way of doing the same exact thing, instead of calling it b and f of b, it's a plus a little bit and f of whatever that is. So in this case, here's a, same exact function as before. Let me darken that. Uh, same exact function as before, but instead of saying a and b, I'm going to say a, and then let's move over by h, so this point right here would be a plus h. And then again, if I wanted the slope of that tangent line right here, then I'm just going to click on this point and drag it in. So essentially what's happening, if you look at this right here, as I drag that point in, h turns into 0, right? Um, and when h is 0, whoops. I missed it there. When h is 0, there's my slope. Even though I'm dividing by 0, really what's missing here is the limit as h goes to 0 in front of it. So uh, let's do this example problem that I've written here. OK. So the goal is to find the instantaneous rate of change of x squared when x equals 3. OK. So. Uh, let's do it by using uh, this approach first, the f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So in this case, I'm going to just to have the graph. You don't actually have to look at the graph, but it helps. So let's say here's 3. And uh, so this point right here will be 3 comma f of 3. And then over here, I'm going to make up some point that I'm going to drag in towards 3. So this one, it's not a specific point. It's some point b comma f of b. OK. So then I'm going to drag this point in and calculate the slope of this line and see how it changes. So the slope of the line is this, but a is really 3 here. And then the goal is to make b turn into 3. So I'm going to do this the limit as b turns into 3 of that whole thing, OK? So uh, this is going to be my instantaneous rate of change at x equals 3, which is also 
the same thing as slope whoop, slope of the tangent at x equals 3. Same exact thing. OK. It's also called the slope of f at x equals 3. So let's work out this limit. Limit as b goes to 3, f of b minus f of 3 over b minus 3. So this is going to turn f of b is, if I plug in b into here, I get, uh, whoop, got to leave limit in front. Limit as b goes to 3 b squared minus 3 squared over b minus 3. And so that's going to turn into limit as b goes to 3 of b plus 3, b minus 3, all over b minus 3. And then these guys will cancel. And at this point, I can plug in the 3, and I get 6. So the slope right here, if I actually drew this accurately, would be 6. That's also the instantaneous rate of change there. So now what I want to do is do it a different way. Okay, so let's do it using that h version instead. So let me draw it again. So let's say 3 is about here. So this point is 3 f of 3. And then I'm going to pick this point to be 3 plus a little bit. So this point right here, 3 plus h f of 3 plus h. So when I come up with the slope formula, uh, and I'm going to make h turn into 0, so I'm going to do the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 all over. Now the difference between these two, the difference in the x values, is always going to be h. It's really 3 plus h minus 3, which is always going to end up being h on the bottom. That's why that plus h version is useful, because you only get h on the bottom every time. So then this is going to turn into limit as h goes to 0 of 3 plus h squared minus 3 squared over h. So if I work this out, that's going to be 9 plus 6h plus h squared minus 9 all over h. And then I can cancel out one of those h's uh, with the h's on top. So I get 6 plus h. And then if I plug in 0 now, I get 6. So two different ways of getting it. Uh, even though I think this one probably looks a little harder for this example, this definition using the h's tends to be used more in calculus. Um, I feel like overall it ends up being the more uh, the easier one in general to use. But in this particular example, I think this one was probably just as easy. So, okay, hope that helps.